Howdy of you delicious people. So I'm here today to review Power Rangers Dino Fury episodes 7 through 9. So... <laughs> That's my reaction to these episodes, is to just laugh. Uh, there's something about these episodes that have this kind of cutesy thing to it, which immediately that's what makes me want to say well i guess i'm not the target audience for the show so what am i talking about uh the target audience is queued up to like young uh kids but like me a person much older than that <laughs> like just going in here just going like i don't like cutesy stuff uh but here's the thing so like we've had Two technical episodes where both Jane and Jay Borg have technically sang something. And, like, it gives these characters something to do. We'll give them that. People could probably say that these characters are annoying with what they're doing. Uh, but I'll just say, like, hey, it gives these characters something to do. Like, really just don't blame these characters for the way that they are to... Like, don't blame the actors or whatever if, like, the way of which they're like, uh, what are we going to do with these characters this week? This. <laughs> like, just have them have them do something. Just put them out. Have them do something. Uh, so, I'm not going to be, like... God, this J-Borg and this Jane, I really, like, it, to me, I'm just like, hey, like, they need to have them do something, so that was it. Um, but, so, we are now about nine episodes in, and we had one Power Rangers crossover that didn't really feel like a crossover to me and but here's the thing that i've also noticed during uh these episodes so one uh the power rangers never fight anybody unmorphed <laughs> i get maybe uh some distancing and stuff like that is happening in this show I'm sure it was very difficult for any number of these actors to do this role. Uh, like, these episodes kind of come out to me to feel like uh, an episode of Melrose Place. If people, like, it kind of feels like a lot of those episodes are kind of like this. Uh, but hey, like, there's stuff about these episodes that I forcibly can't complain because I said, hey, Javi which I'm pronouncing the character's name correctly because he is not Javi. He is Javi. I apologize. Uh, I didn't care much for the character. The character felt like a non-existing entity until the episode that I just went on to here. I'm like, oh, so they're actually doing with this, doing something with this character. What they did was a thing. We'll say that. So, like, I, I also messed up in the last review, and they're only searching for the green uh, Zord. But, uh, so, they are to find the Black Rangers Zord in these three episodes, because, man, do I just love Power Rangers Ninja Steel. Are you a big fan of Power Rangers Ninja Steel? <laughs> no? Well, sucks to be you. Anyway, <laughs> here's, so, uh, so the Power Rangers never fight anybody unmorphed. Uh, we have to consistently do an intro sequence like Power Rangers SPD, or SPD, where the Power Rangers have to come in and like, yeah, like I'm, uh, like I'm the Red Ranger, I'm the Blue Ranger, I'm the Green Ranger, I'm the Red Ranger, I'm the blah, 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 blah. like, how in SPD they always had to go in and say, like, 
I'm SPD Ranger 1 and I'm SPD Ranger 2 and, and so on and so forth every single time before they went out to fight. Uh, but like, I guess that's to help people understand who these things are. Power Rangers, because why not? Uh, I like I like a Power Ranger season with a theme. I kind of wish that they would stick the landing with that uh, to have there be a theme. Uh, I think that there's a lot more other interesting themes, like three probably comes to mind to me, but more than likely that will come out to probably be a much more goofier season with any of my ideas. And plus also, some of the ideas may seem a little bit into the mature side because like i don't want to do a season that seems too dark <laughs> we need to trickle into the light side of things uh but yeah like three uh kind of concepts comes to mind for a theme but i'm just assuming that uh if this season is to like if if, if we're gonna continue on here like, I'm assuming that it's going to probably be a Power Rangers Dino or Mega Dino Thunder or uh, like it's going to be Mega or Super or something. It's going to have just some like, hey, guys, we're going to use the same helmets and the same <laughs> the same gear and the same whatever. Like, we also had those like big like shoulder like goofy attachment things then I'm not going to go and search whatever the heck those titles were uh, for any number of those weapons. Uh, I think that those things, like, are an okay addition to, like, at least there is some kind of higher leveling up thing going on with, uh, with the Rangers. Uh, but yeah, but I hope they keep a theme... Uh, going because if it's just like hopefully it's not another animal theme uh, ever coming soon to theaters in, near you or I hope it's not another like I'm sure it might be some kind of like ninja or or some kind of some some kind of thing that probably has been done before uh, but I'm assuming it's gonna be like a super or a mega Dyna fury. Uh, just because it's like, hey, man, like, this is working out. Uh, so, here's also the thing. Uh, like, these episodes are fairly goofy. Uh, but, like, at least uh, the Megazord delivers us this thing called a Gorilla Press. Where, like, the Megazord is to have a guy over his shoulder and just, like, Gorilla Press him uh, forward. I was like, oh, wow, like, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> like, you don't see that every day. You don't see a, uh, you don't see a Megazord grill press anybody. I'm like, wow, that seems kind of interesting. But, like, as per usual, like, we kind of quickly deal away, uh, with the whole Megazord thing in, uh, in some of the monsters for this episode. I'm like, man, <laughs> I really could care less about the, the Megazord parts in this show, in all brutal honesty. Uh, there's just a lot of hodgepodging going on with the old Megazord thing, shifting and all this kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, I could care less for those scenes. Uh, like, yeah, it's just like... And plus, it just seems like, hey, man, how quickly can we just uh, slice? That one's dead. Oh, slice. Oh, that one. There's a lot of Doom uh, Tower episodes here because basically that character is going to uh, eventually be a character that we spend so much time for what reason. But wait a minute. There is more. Void Knight actually has... A story in this show. Wow. Story. When in the heck are we going to get the Six Ranger? Probably on the very last episode, right? <laughs> of this season? <laughs> are we going to get the Six Ranger on the very last episode? So I won't care? 
because uh, or it's going to be the very like l next to last episode and then they have like it feels like we're kind of stretching out these episodes for the last trickle of things because uh, we spent a lot of time seemingly with uh, Izzy's character more so than anyone else because it seems like okay like this character has its episode uh this character has its episode and but like in the middle uh anyway so like this character has his own episode and then like there is just crossover event and then this character has his episode yeah, so, uh, like, that's basically how it trickles down, is the Rangers have certain episodes. But anyways, uh, so yeah. Let's go into spoilers, let's go and break all this down. Because uh, I think I've kind of got everything out that I think that I wanted to say about this show so far. Uh, I would love a Power Rangers show that probably isn't dinosaurs, but a lot of people would just like... No, I love the dinosaur theme. I want them to do dinosaur themes forever. Uh, because it reminds me of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I completely understand. Uh, like, I bet there's probably eventually going to be just a recycling of themes because it's like, oh, well, it seems people really love this season. So, like, now we should go and recreate that here in the new thing. Uh... But I just didn't understand the selling of uh, Ninja Steel in one of the episodes. What was... Is that probably one of their weaker seasons? And so they have to, like, remind people of one of their... <laughs> hey, guys, remember Ninja Steel? You know, the one that maybe people didn't exactly like? But bizarrely, the one kid from Ninja Steel was in Hyperforce? Because, <laughs> but yeah, like if anything, also like it's kind of interesting watching these episodes because while I was watching them, I'm like, this feels like an episode of Hyperforce. <laughs> this feels like like uh, I've seen so many episodes of Hyperforce where like there's people singing and I'm just like, why? <laughs> there's people just doing all kinds of things and I have to question like. Uh, <laughs> so let's get into it let's go into spoiler time spoiler time it's about that time i'm gonna spoil this episode uh i apologize for how long this rant will be uh like because normally i take five minutes that took 13 i apologize so let's get into this so this first episode is to be javi uh i apologize for ill pronouncing that name i know some people have a thing with names because they're just like hey you purposely mill pronounce this name and i'm like dude i just look up names and i search whatever and like because i don't remember the names while i'm watching the show rarely it's pretty obvious so the first episode we get here is to have javi and the one just uh, thing so Javi was to, like, we're assuming that Buzz Blast is his first and only job, correct? Buzz Blast is, his, is a YouTube supposedly thing. So, Javi is to get that keytar, like he had mentioned in previous episodes. So, I'm like, good. They went back to that. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. Because... That actually means that this character's thing was going to go somewhere, and I do appreciate that. But, <coughs> why do you have to have a sticker price on that item? Because immediately in my head, that was like $800, $900. And I'm just thinking, okay, this guy, like... If he had no money whatsoever and all of a sudden did buzz blast and we're probably thinking that this like he started this job weeks ago 
And now he has the ability to fo afford an $800, $900, like, keytar off of a YouTube thing, supposedly, or a YouTube equivalent. I'm just kind of scratching my head, and I'm just going, like, man, for anybody who has, like, common job, or, like, for anyone who is to be an adult watching their kids watch this, they're just like, man, $800, $900 for, like, this keytar thing, because I don't remember the price, because... It had just a bunch of zeros in it to me. I'm just like, wow. Like, so, hey, kids, don't do a normal job. Because <laughs> you're just going to get, like, a freaking just, just garbage amount of money compared to YouTube uh, thing because everybody's hugely successful on YouTube, right? No. Uh, even the people that are at certain tiers of things are just like, dude, I don't make no money. Like, we have Pootie Pie, who's the most highest whatever guy of YouTube, and he's like, I don't make no money. Boo-hoo-hoo! Uh, look at my, uh, like, three other houses that I own. Boo-hoo-hoo! I, I went in a summer home of, because he has summer homes, bizarrely, but he has, he makes no money. Boo-hoo-hoo! But uh, that's just him. That's just Pootie Pie because he's worked hard. He's, he was the first one doing a lot of things, so give it to him. Like, because freaking the guy works hard, and he does it every day. And, like, his his thing that he does is challenging. But, but yeah, but, like, nobody, like, like free. Me doing things just free and what, anyways... But 900, ah, well, keep, uh, anyways, let's get beyond that. So right after the price tag that had to be shown, all of a sudden we have Jay Borg, who is to uh, go and sing, and Jane is to sing, and I'm just like, okay, well, they're doing something on the show, give them that, but, like, ah, uh, whatever. Uh, but at least, like, Javi is doing something musical, but the thing that happens after that, where, like, Javi has to play a thing on a flute to eventually get his Zord, I was like, okay, that just seems a little overkill now. Like, seems a little overboard with the whole music thing. Like, I get it, but, like, also I regret it. <laughs> I get it, but I regret that we have to just have this whole segment of flute playing and Zord. And plus also he has to call his Zord like a dog. Uh, uh, they're also kind of all in this episode kind of talking about like stomach problems or whatever in this episode. And I'm just like, why are they coming back to that consistently in this episode? Can everybody just have stomach problems in this episode? Because... I would. <laughs> Just be like, man, I want a really good story. <laughs> I, want really, I want to make my like, character look so cool. And I really want to just, like, uh, kick people in the face while not being morphed. Just one kick in the face. <laughs> Give it to me. Give it to me, show. I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways. But, like, this episode is also, like, feeling of Melrose Place. So, Javi is to go and play his keyboard thing, and everybody's just like, Oh my god, man, this guy is just, like, totes my goats! Everybody just circle around him, and just, yeah, just, like, this guy has this ability to just, like, have people have an addiction of his music. Maybe he's some kind of, like... Probably not a, uh, like a, a siren, banshee kind of thing, because, like, they have, a person has to sing, and Javi just plays, but, like, he just has magical fingers, and, <laughs> which has Jane, J-Borg doing their thing, so all of a sudden the Warren, who is to be, like, Captain Buzzkill, I think, like they said in the very first early of this, Warren, uh, or Garcia comes in, and is to be like, hey, this music thing, I need to get rid of that. 
Garcia is to mention to ha- Javi that's like, hey, like, like you, like you getting this keytar, like, man, I'm gonna just return this. <laughs> And also, like, Javi, you went from, like, harmonica to now, like, uh, this other, this other instrument now to, like, the guitar. Like, it kind of feels like, like, this guy is just, like, I don't know what was going on here where it's just, like, was he to say, like, pick something and stick with it or, like, like, what was going on here? What was the message that Garcia was to get across? That he, like, he's overspending on his instrument thing? Like, is the kid being smart about his money? <laughs> what What is the thing here? What is the, like, does the dad just no longer like uh, his kid to play music? What is the thing <laughs> So, like, it kind of feels like the moment where, like, Garcia is telling this kid to, like, grow up or something, or, like, I don't know, like, that's what it kind of felt like this was to me, where, like, the guy was just like, you know what, you gotta be smarter with your money, and grow up, kid, because this is freaking eight, nine hundred dollars, and, like, you gotta be smart with your money, because, like, you have, like, uh, like rent to pay or something like what what is he what 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 does he spend money on is all of a sudden he's like uh I, 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 like is he going and uh, like making a record somewhere for music i don't know anyways pushing on uh i'm taking too long for this so uh what eventually ends up happening is uh javi is to join the rest of the group uh, Javi supposedly is just distant or just like brooding because he's Batman now because he's worth black anyways. And like there's people that are just like, hey man, you got the rumbly tumblies and the stuff. And he's like, no man, like no. But then eventually the Power Rangers see the video that goes viral about this guy playing and then all of a sudden the warden chimes in. And he's like, hey kid, grow up. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Uh, and so the Power Rangers was like, Ah, like so we had to go and 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 find out via this video luckily uh that Javi wasn't going to tell us what was wrong and so now we eventually have to tell him about the video and just be like hey Javi like we saw the video and like Javi's like yeah like that was the one thing that like I didn't want something to go viral in my life because <laughs> Like everything just goes viral at Buzz Blast. <laughs> Cause they have huge number of subscriptions and they can just throw money just like it's nobody's business. Uh because more maybe it's like a thousand dollars in interview or something. I'm trying to rationalize how much money these these people are making because you put it eight nine hundred dollar thing and the, the whatever and i'm just like trying to do the math because like a common like job would probably give you probably somewhere of the lines of like uh like if you're full-time and you work 40 out you probably get like a pretty decent payday if you got like 10 bucks an hour or uh like i don't know what minimum wage it doesn't matter. Moving on. Uh, I'm so heavily distracted in this episode. So, uh, pushing on. So, this episode is to have Do or Boom Tower as the villain. Because we just really just uh, didn't need a, a villain this week. Uh, so, Boom Tower is to be the villain. Gorilla Press. Great uh moment of boom tower because boom tower is to go and take the sporex and put it inside of him because he naturally assumes that void knight doesn't really need the sporex and like what is he really collecting this for but eventually we find out in these episodes that void knight is collecting all this sporex to revive some 
uh, some woman that's in some fish tank or some kind of tank of sorts. So this is like the uh, this is like the Mister Freeze plot of like so we're going with Batman and Robin as a story for this character. Like, hey, at least they gave him something. Like, bravo, at least they gave him something. Like, let's just get that out of the way. Uh, so, Boom Tower is to fight the Power Rangers. And, of course, he grows big. They take him down. Boom Tower loses and then just leaves. And I'm like, okay, that was, that was a great use of time for but we're just going right back to javi who all the rangers just chip in because they're all just millionaires anyways off of one week of <laughs> just the boom blast because you they'll they'll tell they'll it seems like that uh so uh <laughs> so javi just goes and takes the guitar and is playing it and then everybody is dancing. We have Jane and uh, Jay Borg. Like we have Jane, who's to be like the 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 tough boss. But then she's like, "Oh no, I love dancing." And then so everybody's just bizarrely dancing it out at the at the end of this episode. And I'm just like, dancing and, and music in a, a Power Rangers episode. <laughs> like, hey, like I guess they just need something to do. <laughs> <laughs> they just need something. Music. Javi at least has this episode. Give him that. So the next episode is to actually have a monster in it. That's great. Uh, but we also have to bizarrely uh, have a tie of uh, Mick Cannon from uh, Ninja Steel Red, who is Ninja Steel Red the the goofy looking guy from ninja steel uh nothing wrong with the guy's looks it's just he has wild hair and we also have to tie in the nexus prism to have zato touch the nexus prism thing to all of a sudden get the entire history of power rangers ninja steel because if you can't just go to a streaming service somewhere oh that's right power rangers really isn't on a streaming service anywhere now is it <laughs> netflix barely anyways so uh like because where are you gonna find this in a dvd and blu-ray set there's the selling point yeah like if you have a big collection of like power rangers dvds and blu-rays like good for you uh but yeah, so this is an episode basically with just like a crossover to just like just get us through this one. Uh, so so uh, so mechanic or Mick uh, is to try and desperately try and find the Nexus Prism because the Nexus Prism is just randomly by this location. And so it seems like Mick has just told these rangers, hey, yeah, like, I've been with all kinds of Power Rangers. Like, I, like, hang out with them. We have barbecues, all kinds of stuff and whatever. Because, like, yeah, like, you can, just tra you can just trust any random person with wild and crazy hair who says that he's been hanging out with the Power Rangers. Like, yeah, guys, just go and demorph. And, like, he can just see all your secret identities and then just take a photo with all you guys and then just, like, arrest all of you. <laughs> like, hey, these are the Power Rangers. Arrest all of them. Go ahead. Like, they hurt me. They really did. Here's also the thing that I actually noticed because I think they do this a lot in Power Rangers anyways. There is never a secret place for the Power Rangers to morph. But man, do they do morphing sequences in this show, like, right out in the open. Like, everybody is just there. Like, man, the whole secrecy act of it is just, like, no longer a thing. Like, why not even just bust out those, uh, those mantis-like things on your head there, Zato, and just frickin' just secret let it just be out. Like... 
how about we just tell everybody who the Power Rangers are so we never again have to have people do anything in secret because they don't do it in secret anyways. <laughs> who are the Power Rangers? I guess whoever those people are. Yeah, because obviously we got Alien Guy there. Nexus Prism, that's obviously just for anybody to just go and just like, hey man, I desperately want to become a Ninja Steel Power Ranger, so I hope I can just grab on this piece here and just be, just morph, you know? Like, hopefully, see you guys later. <laughs> <coughs> so, we have this monster who is to be called Wolfgang, and immediately when I see this monster, I'm like, oh my god, like, you know what, like, I actually just want there to be, like, a supernatural, like, uh, supernatural theme of Power Rangers. I know you'll say Mystic Force, but I say a wizard show. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> like, I want a real supernatural, like, give me, like, a Justice League Dark kind of uh, freaking... Uh, uh, approach to like give me a, a a a supernatural kind of show like supernatural cw that was actually had high ratings in uh for that show but so anyways wolfgang uh wolfgang is to be this character that is to howl and blast away just seemingly everything like he blasts and like the the megazord just completely comes undone and it's just like, wow, what a flimsy, like, <laughs> what a flimsy just thing. Like, we just have this monster come in, just blah, and, like, that just easily just knocks the entire Megazord just like that. It, so, uh, what eventually happens in this episode is uh, Mechanic himself is to figure out a way, because... Like, we have Mechanic that is to change bizarrely into all these oddball items. Like, this little car or, like, this uh, bird. Like, so I'm just like, okay, like, I, did, I only watched, like, the pilot episode of Ninja Steel. Because, like, even, like, at that, I was kind of like, man, this show is, like... Ugh. Anyways, um... But I didn't know that this guy does this goofy ability that he changes in anything maybe that's just for this show i don't know just to try and get people to get back into like oh man i should probably see ninja steel to see what this goofy dude guy does i want to see what the goofy guy does with the weird hair it looks like a uh, freaking doc brown from back to the future <laughs> so uh mechanic goes and concocts this cough drop of a thing that he tosses into uh, Wolfgang to to basically just quiet him down to this squeaking voice that I'm just like, oh man, that's nice to hear. So, but we get into Megazorb mode, and so here's the hilarious thing. So, Boom Tower is to be, like, up with being a, a, a Megazorb-sized monster dude to... Uh, with Wolfgang, but here's the hilarious thing. So, the Power Rangers just go, oh, Wolfgang's big too? Oh, uh, cause slice, and he's dead. And then, <laughs> and then they go after Boom Tower, and Boom Tower has this cool ability where he takes, uh, like, a cannon, and he, like, tosses his these balls into his, like, uh, into his, like, back of a thing, and then he, like, shoots out all these balls out of his chest, like, I think that was actually a cool thing. I actually liked that. I actually liked Boom Tower. Um, it was sad to eventually see him get killed because he gets freaking killed in this episode. Uh, so now we actually have to have Void Knight actually do a thing here because Void Knight is like, man, I need to get some of that sweet, sweet Sporex because, man, I desperately want to get more Sporex because, like... This thing that I'm not going to tell my other people of why I need this Sporex so bad. So, the last episode is to finally have Ollie do a thing. But it just seems like all of a sudden he becomes Gadget Guy. And I'm like, since when is all of a sudden he just Gadget Guy now? Like, 
maybe in the pilot episode, like his mother had a drone, but it just seemed like what like this comes extremely out of left field that Ollie is just gadget guy because I guess they needed something for him to do. But I bet I put money on it for the last two episodes. You'll probably never see this again. <laughs> so Ollie finally had his episode and good for him. But the thing that they do with Ollie in this episode, I'm just like full on cringing with the gadgets and the like the 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 coat that has the fan. I'm like, what? In the heck? <laughs> Sato goes into the little hammock and then just spins around. And I'm just like, what is the show? <laughs> what is the show? <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> I had a good time, but I was just like, I am just like, is this episode over, please? So I can get to the, like, so I can kind of just be done uh, with this one. Uh, so eventually I'll get to the last bit of this. Because uh, I just like, there is some goofy things happening in these episodes. And I'm just like, I can't, I just can't today. I use Power Rangers, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on, Power Rangers? Anyway, it's, it's just like, so Ollie is to have these goofy gadgets. He is to have this gadget coat. And so everybody is like, hey, man, like, why are you wearing a coat? Like, it's obviously not a good weathered environment for a coat. But then by the end of the episode, every single one of the Power Rangers are all wearing a coat. That is just like Ollie's. And. But yeah. So Ollie has these fans popping up in the. Uh, on the top of this coat. To hit him from both sides. And Zato makes the thing of just like. Why not just take off the coat? You'll probably feel better. And he's like. But I won't have my gadgets with me. Like all of a sudden. Ollie is to take off his shoe. And his shoe is to have some gadget with it. But then he can no longer walk anywhere because of the shoe. So he has to stay there because no other shoe. And I'm just like, uh huh. So, so they go camping, and I'm like, good. Camping feels like a new thing that they do here. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, pause here for a second. Camping feels like a new territory. Uh, cause it's always just like they fight in the city or they fight in a park, like, Hey, like, uh, a, a campsite that feels new, right? That feels like something new, something, uh, a tiny bit fresh. Uh, oh, like the Ninja Steel episode, like basically just a lot of review of Ninja Steel. Uh, also, cause I want to, I'll finish, I'll finish that up. So Mechanic is to give the Rangers a database if I guess there's going to eventually be more Rangers that arrive in other in other Dino Fury season, which I'm sure that's what's going to happen. There's probably going to be a lot of guest appearances, probably. If not, then... But, like, there has to be a reason why this character came in to give them this database thing uh, to let them know about other Power Rangers... Plus, also, we get the Morphin Masters to come back again for another appearance to just say, like, hey, the Morphin Masters also created this uh, this uh, Nexus Prism thing. Good for them. All right. <laughs> we just really have to just pat these guys in the back for all the things that they've in invented over the years. <laughs> just continue to just bring them up because that's got to be the new thing for this, this show, in all honesty. Uh, but anyways, so... Uh, but yeah, so, but back at the camp scenario site thing, uh, so Void Knight is to desperately get this balloon that is to cut off communication, I guess, with the, the Power Rangers and, uh, Zolan. And so, 
Ollie is to desperately try to figure out how to take out this, uh, this balloon, and he has to come up with all these gadgets to, and this huge, like, javelin with, uh, with, uh, like, propellers on it, or, like, uh, drone wheels on it, or some goofy thing, uh, that they have to, uh, use, like, a crossbow thing to try to get, and... Like, uh, Amelia is saying how cute it is that, like, he's talking to the to the spear thing that's going to hit this balloon. I'm like, okay, uh, just balloon thing side mission. Like, they, they ran out of things to do in this episode. <laughs> like, it's only hedgemen or just, like, we can't take out Void Knight, so, like... <laughs> We're going to have to come up with something in, the, in this episode for them to have something else to do uh, than normal Power Ranger stuff. Plus, also, we have to justify Ollie finally for a show that he has to do the main uh, or he has to do some side quest thing that is to prove his worth to the Power Rangers, which is like it is what it is. So uh, I can't complain about it because I said like, well, hey, like what about Blue and Black? What's up with them? And then like they did something with them. And so I can't complain about anything. Uh, so, like at least they did something. At least they did something. Anyways, so... Uh, so Void Knight is going off into town just stealing all the, the sporks. Jane and J-Borg are just like, hey man, like... We gotta call the Power Rangers, but it seems like they just can't get to the hotline. It's, they try to, like, get this, like, uh, this, like, phone booth of a phone kind of thing. Uh, and that doesn't work. I'm like, well, yeah, because none of those things work anymore. Like, basically, uh, like, everybody has to have, like, a cell phone. And some of them have, like, good quality cell phones. And some people just don't. Some people have, like, crappy setups and stuff like that for YouTube because... They don't have nine hundred dollars just blow, <laughs> or is it eight hundred? Who cares? Uh, like that just feels like a horrible thing for me to keep mentioning. Anyways, uh, it do it makes me it makes me look bad. Uh, but freaking like, <sighs> it's anyways. So, uh, pushing on. So. Power Rangers pop the balloon. Uh, Sola is to communicate with them. All is right with the world. Power Rangers are to fight a monster called uh, Rustafa. Random. Uh, <laughs> like, just the, the action sequences and everything to just... I'm kind of just tired of the whole, like... The Power Rangers have to fight everybody with the sword. I don't feel like they punch or kick anybody. I think every attack is like a sword attack, it seems. It feels like to me that every attack is an, an a sword attack or whatever accessories that they have on them for this week. Uh, because there's a product to sell. There's like There always has to be a product to sell. You can't have them do some unique thing that it's be like, oh, hey, look at the, like, the Gorilla Press thing was amazing, but you're not seeing any of the Power Rangers do any of that because, like, that's not a product to sell. Like, hey, look at the Blue Ranger doing a Gorilla Press. Like, no one cares, I guess. So it's just like, hey, really sell these swords. Like, give them all kinds of keys and stuff like that. So that way, like, definitely give them all kinds of different kind of things that they can do with the sword because we got a toy to sell um so every single action is with sword or with like there's got to be a thing to sell uh but yeah so as per usual mustafa gets wiped out it doesn't really matter <laughs> like megazord uh, attack thing uh, like, it seems like they're doing something different with the Megazord, which I can like. Uh, I really enjoyed the actual Megazord, uh, sequence with Boom Tower. Uh, 
uh, where it was a long stretch of that, where I was like, oh, I can actually feel like I can watch this now. Uh, like, a lot of the fighting sequences I'm losing interest in uh, when it comes down to the Power Rangers, because I'm like, uh, sword, 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 that's all I'm seeing. Uh, <laughs> so, like, and it's just always just like, hey, more henchmen, uh, Ray, like, c could, like, can we see Void Knight fight any of them anytime soon? Uh, could we just get that one kind of, like, why do we always have the main villain be this guy that just kind of sits on a throne or is to just stand around uh, what is Mucus doing? Nothing? <laughs> like, she's just the, the, uh, the goofy character that eventually gets Sporex for Void Knight, uh, through these episodes, and I'm just like, man, that Mucus character just, like, is just there. <laughs> man, uh, now that we have Void Knight who has a story, what happens with all of this other stuff? Uh, cause Mucus is just, like, I hope she just gets wiped out in one of the other episodes. But, like, we probably have, like, what, Gold Ranger coming? So that's gonna take, like... Like, they should have popped out another episode for that character. Because, like, they drop him in on the next episode. And, like, they just carry that on to just... Man, that Gold Ranger is just gonna take every... He's gonna wipe out Void Knight. He's gonna wipe out Mucus. He's gonna take down everybody. What villains do we have left? No one great <laughs> the world is saved because gold ranger came in because for two episodes or i'm sure he's gonna be in the finale right gold ranger no like so like because i've seen gold ranger so like is that gonna be the next season when it the gold ranger like i've, I've seen photos <laughs> i've seen things gold ranger is that, is, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I, that I have to say for these episodes. Like, there's some stuff where I'm just like, man, it's kind of good that this show is just short. Uh, I like that the episodes are short. Like, thank God. Uh, cause I don't know. It's just like, uh, I always love going back to like some old Power Ranger stuff, uh, just because like stories were good. Uh, like everything about it just made me feel good about watching those kinds of episodes. Uh, but yeah, but like once we start to get to these later seasons and stuff like that, I'm just like, okay, like they do some goofy things with characters and like, it's never not going to be like this, like cringe of a thing where I'm going to go into episodes and just be like, yeah, like, like man, uh, man, what I love me, um, X, Y, Z themes. Like, I don't want to see, I don't want to say what themes that they are, but I could probably do a video just saying like, Hey, what are three th three themes that I would love to have in a Power Ranger season because more than likely it's just like, ah, oh, well, who cares? <laughs> like, who cares about those themes? But like, there's certain themes where I'm like, okay, they never did this. They never did that. And, never... and so, uh, yeah, that's, I guess what my next, uh, like, like just deciphering. Cause I always have like a theory crafting thing of like, man, what if Power Rangers did this? Uh, like, always have ideas coming into my head about certain kinds of stuff, like, all the time. Uh, freaking check out the one, uh, Power Rangers concept review thing, uh, where, like, I can make a whole story out of just nothing. And then a lot of people are like, man, that story sucked, and I'm like, great, <laughs> thanks. So, that said, I'm gonna get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.